Hi guys, welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to get back on boring the Suzuki TC90 with a lathe. So let me get you over there. I've already, I've got the adapter on. I've got it in the lathe. I'm just finishing up, uh, trying to get everything uh, uh, centered and uh, set right so we can be square with it. So let's get over there and take a look at it. Okay, this is part two of the boring with the lathe. Uh, I've got two indicators set up here just to kind of get me in the ballpark. And I've already been working on this a little bit, so we've still got uh, some ways to go yet. Uh, this here, this one here is checking my, uh, my straightness with the cylinder. And this one actually is too, in a way. You're, you're, you know, this thing could be cocked in there one way or the other, and it apparently is a little bit. Uh, I had it; it was about six or seven thousandths, and I'm, I'm down to. Eh, it looks like maybe three, and I'm just kind of bumping that to try to get it. Uh, Situated. Let me back you out just a little bit here so I can continue doing so. And I just find the high spot here, which is right here, and then tap it. Oops, looks like it kind of went the other way. It's sometimes it happens. All right, so let's uh, kind of re. Recenter things here. Okay, I'm going to work on the other one a little bit now. Okay, we've taken a lot of that out by doing what we did. Yeah, that did some pretty good work there, looks like. So we're down to about two and a half. Let's see. Okay, now we're down to about one and a half, I think. Nope, about one. And get a broader view here. Let me uh, take away the magnification. Okay. See, this is working. This is our adapter, and it's working from the top. So, actually, we're going to tighten at the bottom our high spot. Here's our high spot and 
our lever actually is being pushed down, see? So we're going to go under here and just give it a little, yeah, see that? That took care of a little bit more of it. We're still at about a half thousandths on the this one here, and our other one is uh, uh, about three. It looks like so we've got still some work to do there. Let's see what that. Sometimes it gets frustrating. Because you hit, you do one thing and it affects the other one, of course. I don't know. That's that's looking pretty close. Okay, you're really not going to be able to see much here, but we're gonna we're gonna give it a go. It's just so small, and and it's just uh, the lathe doesn't uh, lend itself as well to this, but uh, we'll see what we can do here. I've got as much light in there that I think I can get around it without being in the way. And the oblongness is the plate, not the cylinder. The cylinder is square. Take a light cut through just to make sure all my corrections are good. And of course, all the when we were centering it, we were using the, the top about an eighth of an inch. That's where there's no ring wear at all. So if you've got a straight portion on the cylinder, it's still there. So that's what we're trying to do. Getting down towards the middle now, that's where most of the wear should be, so you don't hear as much uh, cutting going on there. When you get down around the ports, it's always the worn area. After I get through this time, I'm going to probably use a, a different gear. This one's getting a little, I, you hear a little rattling. That's the uh, play in the gears. I'm going too slow for the speed I'm in.
Okay, here's our first cut through and uh, the shinier spots are where we actually cut. So there's a little that wasn't right there and a little bit that wasn't right there. And that's where all that scoring is. See if I can get something here where I don't have my big fat finger in there. Now right in here was the scoring. You can still see it. So a little, it's just taking a little bit. So the wear areas are a little bit beyond where we're cutting so far. And it looks like it's pretty universal all the way down. And of course at the bottom we do uh, more of a cut. I don't know whether I can get you in there any further. Uh, be more of a cut on the bottom all the way around because uh, that's the least worn down there. So I think we're doing okay. But there's just not much to see here, guys. Sorry. More of a consistent cut the second time through. There's still some interruption there. There's going to be for a while yet, but it slowly goes away. I'm running a little faster. When we get down towards the middle, it uh, gets into the wear area again, so it's more interrupted there. Okay guys, we're almost cleaned up. Got a little bit right here. And there's a little bit right here. And this is the worst area right here. And uh, if you, I kind of, I don't know if this is going to work putting that light back there or not. I've uh, still got one pretty good uh, score right there. And over here just a little bit, but I believe that'll probably come out next time around. It's getting real close. This is just where I pulled the, the tool bit out. So I, I think here pretty quick we're going we're gonna to clean up completely. If not this one, probably the next one. It's just so hard to see anything in there. And I'm not sure what you're seeing. I won't know until I review it. Another couple thou. Probably be pretty close to cleaning up this time through. Wished I'd got my hole centered on my plate a little bit better. It, I know what it is, at least, but it's, uh, I knew when I when I did that, I, I was just doing a wag on it. Just put it where I thought it was going to work and then put the holes around it. I just didn't take a lot of time. But it's working.
We're into the port area now. So we basically got two places that we're getting interrupted cut in now, and that's the port area and the the very bottom, the skirt, where you've got, uh, you know, it's divided down there. Okay, we're now we're below the ports again. So the next interrupted cut will be the where you've got the two scallops on each side there. Okay, I'm just going to take a quick look here and see where we're see where we're at. I'm not worried about size too much right now. I'm just checking to make sure I'm got about the same place up here. Yeah, we're pretty straight. Okay, so that's my only concern at the moment, just to make sure we're uh, We've got a pretty straight bore. That's what we're after. Of course, we're still not uh, completely cleaned up yet either, but we just want to check. You know, we've got a little bit right here. And a little bit right here, all the way down to the exhaust port. Looks like most of it's, you know, right below the exhaust port, or was it the intake? No, it was the intake. Was most of the the uh, scoring, and it's real close to being cleaned up there. Uh, but I just wanted to get in there and make sure that I didn't have some taper or something that I needed to worry about. Everything looks good. Back in the ports.
just about through the bottom now. There it is. Okay guys, we just cleaned up in this last pass. Looks like everything is good to go. Everything looks good in there. And we uh, So we cleaned up at, this is half, remember you're dealing with a cylinder here, so we cleaned up at 30 thousandths, so we've got another uh, almost five before we get to the piston size, and then we'll start uh, putting our, uh, our clearance in, but we'll, we'll do most of that on the, on the uh, hone, but it did take uh, right at 30 thousandths to, uh, to clean it up. So uh, 20 thousandths is basically your half millimeter and 40 thousandths is your uh, one millimeter over. Okay, uh, on this one, we're, uh, this is the manual for this Suzuki cylinder. And it's telling me that uh, we're going to measure it at uh, five millimeter or 0.2 inches above the exhaust port. And really, with a brand new uh, cylinder, you can measure it anywhere because it should be brand new everywhere. So uh, your your 0.2 is where they want you to measure it, uh, and. We're measuring our new one. Get you up here a little bit. Okay, they're also saying to measure our piston. Uh, the piston measurement at 20 millimeters, 0.787 above the skirt. And that would be like right here. So we're going to we mark that. Kind of hard to hold it and everything here, but that's just a little bit higher than that. Okay, so that's where they want you to measure it at. So we'll get our measurement there. Okay, so we're at 1.885. So that figures out, according to Google, 47.88 millimeter. And I think our, let's see, the original, yeah, the original bore size is uh, 47 to just a little bit over. So let me plug all that into my dial bore gauge. Okay, I've just set my bore gauge up and I'm going to double check it now with the mic. This is kind of tricky here, but you can do it. Okay, there we go. Right at it. So now we'll go check the cylinder. Okay, let's uh, take a down and dirty reading here.
Okay, so we're at 1.7855. So we've got almost 10 thousandths to go. So we've got the piston just starting now. And if you do a quick check on your on your piston. So here at the top, we're at about 1878, and then we go to where they tell you to measure. 1888. So we're about 10 thousandths. So let's come up and take another two, I guess. Just going to hit it with a little sandpaper right here at the edge on the top, just to clean that up. See where we're at here? Yeah. Okay. I usually, when I get to the top of the pin, that's when I start honing. So that, probably another couple thou, maybe three. Okay, we're just about to the point where we're going to start honing. I've got, I'm almost to the pin. And if we look at the DRO, we're a thousandths away according to that, but that's that's just a, a guesstimate because I think the first cut I took was about two thousandths. But that's going to tell us that it's uh, the same size as the piston, so not our clearance. So I think I'm going to take a one thou finishing cut and then we'll hone the rest of it from there. Okay, I think we're about where we're going to stop. Oh yeah, just right. Just right. So we'll go ahead and pull it off there and then we'll take it over to the bench and take a peek at it. Let's go ahead and get this thing out of here. Yeah. 
Looks nice. Let's get it over on the bench. Okay, let's get it off of this. Okay, I'm going to just go ahead and check the head, or check the uh, uh, flatness here. And then we'll get on with checking the bore. So I always like to do this, just to make sure everything's good to go. Little soap and water, 400 grit, wet and dry paper. I think I'm going to tape that down. Yeah, let me tape that down. Okay, that way you don't have to chase it, chase the paper all the time. a little. It's flat where it counts. Right there. We'll see if we can improve on it a little. Okay, there's our board cylinder. Looks pretty good. So we'll be uh, Honing this to size uh, in the next video, I, I suppose. But as of right now, we're just about where we need to be. That's usually where I stop. Actually, I usually stop just about there. But that's better. That's less I've got to, to hone. So we're real close. Got our little mark there. Yeah, 1885. So we've got a, a thousandths before we're at the same size, and then we've got to put two to two and a half thousandths clearance in. So we're, we'll be taking out uh, about three or four thousandths with the, with the home. But cleaned up pretty nice. Uh, just couldn't have done it at uh, at a half a millimeter because it it was uh, ten thousandths over that before it cleaned up. So this is the best we could do. Uh, just there was just too much in the uh, in the scoring, but it's all cleaned up now. So until then, that's it. Okay guys, there you have it. We got the TC, TC or TS, TC I think, 90 board to one millimeter over. Uh, we've still got to uh, go ahead and hone and fit, uh, but that'll be in the next one. You can see that the 
doing this in the lathe is a lot more time consuming. Not only do you have to make the jig, actually we were lucky that we had one already and just had to modify it a little bit. But if you had to do that, uh, you'd probably have another, I don't know, couple of hours in it. And you know, you just, it's really tough when you're doing little ones like this. This is the only way I can do it. If you had a, a regular motorcycle boring machine, you could probably do that in, uh, you know, 15, 20 minutes. Took me probably an hour and 15 minutes. And, you know, I'm, I'm really cautious when I do it. I, I really take my time trying to set everything up. And, uh, you know, it just, it just takes time. And uh, the right equipment would make the job a lot easier. But at seven or eight thousand dollars for one of those boring machines, I elected to buy a milling machine. I can do a lot more with it. And uh, uh, I can go ahead and bore these little ones like this in the lathe if I need to. So, hey, thanks for going along on the ride. And we'll see you next video.